I was a little surprised when you said that ancient people like Trifo and Celsus uh, held to uh, something like a mythicist view. Um, isn't it true that both Trifo and Celsus explicitly talk about Jesus' birth and his baptism and his death by crucifixion in order to, to show that these were natural events and not supernatural events? Uh, yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, yeah, I noticed that, uh, and it seems to me that the only way to make sense out of this is that they're going on to say, well, this is your story. Let's see if it has any plausibility, and so that he's uh, uh, elaborating on how it's it's incompetent as okay, a myth. Okay, well, I, you know, I, I don't read it that way at all. I think, I mean, it, all of these texts are readily available, and they're very interesting texts. I encourage everybody to read them, the dialogue with Trifo. Uh, dialogue with Trifo by Justin and the contra the, the against Celsus that you find in Origin, where he quotes Celsus's views, and it's pretty clear that the Celsus believes that Jesus was born and that he was baptized and he was tempted that he was crucified. I mean, he, he's quite explicit about it. I noticed when you were talking about my view uh, in that little segment, you had first quoted uh, Trifo that the Christ you have created for yourself. Then later, you quoted me as saying something about traditions that. Uh, from a few years within, uh, a few years before Jesus was supposedly crucified, or before the supposed crucifixion, it seems like you could take me to say, "Well, Jesus wasn't really crucified; he was only." And it's, I think you're reading Trifo that way, rather than because the, these guys uh, they they spend their treatises showing that the Christian interpretation of the events is wrong, but they never deny that Jesus was born or baptized or crucified. One of our big disagreements is about Paul's understanding of the death of Jesus. When Paul says that the archons of this Ion killed him, you take this to mean that there are these celestial powers up in the heavenly places, and you take it in a Gnostic sense. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so the question is, what does Paul mean by the term archon, and what does he mean by the term Ion? So Paul uses these terms in other places. What does he mean when he says archon? None of them seem to me to be references to earthly rulers, not even Romans uh, It's Romans 13.3. 13, it's quite clear he's talking about earthly rulers. Uh, I don't, I mean, I, I don't think. I know it's usually taken that way, but I uh, think the, the tribute uh, rendered unto listen, the rulers. Here, here's what he says. He says, be subject to every governing authority, for there is no authority except from God. Therefore, he who resists authority resists what God has appointed. For the archons are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Who, would you have no fear of him who is in authority? He's talking about ruling, author, governing authorities. Well, uh, on the one hand, if he does mean that, uh, we have the, the oddity of him saying, the, it's only the wicked God punishes, you mean like Jesus? Would a guy say that if he thought Jesus had been unjustly, judicially murdered by the, the authorities? Yes, he apparently did say that, and so did First Peter. I mean, this is a common uh, trope. Right, it's problem. a common trope in early Christianity. Through, after the New Testament period, you have all sorts of authors who say uh, that, that Jesus was killed by the authorities, and you should obey the authorities. I mean, it, it may not make sense to us, but the reason they're saying this is because they don't want to cause any more problems. They don't want Christians to be doing things against the law. Uh, so, and the, the idea that the Ions are referring to Gnostic myths, uh, okay, so I just encourage everybody to read up about Gnosticism. 